Exploring Space, A Little Golden Book Exploring Space, a true story about the rockets of today and a glimpse of the rockets that are to come by Rose Wilder, pictures by Tibor Grigoli, cover by George Solonewicz. Rockets Away Only rockets can fly in space. We now have big, powerful rockets that can go there. But they fly without riders, for they are not safe. Scientists use them for tests. This big rocket is almost ready for a test flight. All it needs is fuel. Zoom! Boom! Zoom! The rocket's fuel explodes. Flames leap from its tail. The roaring rocket shoots high into the sky. In two minutes, it shoots up 50 miles. It's radio signals. Beep, 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 bop. A ground crew listens for the signals. They tell about the air high in the sky, and they tell how high the rocket flies. Click, click. The rocket's camera snaps pictures of the Earth below. Now the rocket is up 100 miles. It is far, far above the clouds. Up there the air is very, very thin, and the sky is black, even in the daytime. Up higher there is no air, just black space. The rocket cannot go that high. It starts falling. The camera comes down by parachute. It drifts through the air and lands safely. But the rocket has no parachute. It plunges into the sea. Gravity pulls the camera and rocket down. Gravity is a force inside the Earth. It works all the time, pulling down on everything and everybody. That's why no one falls off the big round Earth. Gravity makes you feel heavy. If the Earth had no gravity, you would have no weight. No one would have weight. Everyone would fly into space. Because of gravity, going down is easy, but going up is hard. Jump up and you push against gravity. The harder you push, the higher you jump. Throw a ball into the air and you work against gravity. The harder you throw, the higher the ball goes. A rocket, too, works against gravity. A big engine pushes it up into the sky. The harder the engine pushes, the higher the rocket flies. The engine burns a lot of fuel, and it burns it fast. The rocket reaches a speed of thousands of miles an hour. Then the engine stops, and it coasts. On and on it goes. If the rocket reaches space, it keeps on coasting. Why? Because space is almost empty, it cannot stop a rocket. A rocket or anything else stops only when something makes it stop. How will it feel to ride in a speedy rocket? If animals could talk, they could tell us, for mice and monkeys, dogs and cats have flown in rockets. The animals ride in the rocket's nose. A camera takes their pictures during the flight. While coasting, the animals cannot feel the pull of gravity. They have no weight. None at all. They float around like balloons. A parachute brings the rocket's nose down to Earth. Then the animals are rescued. As far as scientists can tell, they like the ride. To get people into space, scientists think we will need huge rockets made in several parts or stages. We already have three-stage rockets that are as tall as tall buildings. This one, called Vanguard, lifts a little moon into the sky. Bang! Vanguard blasts off. The Stage 1 engine shoots the rocket up. High in the sky, Stage 1 breaks away. The Stage 2 engine blasts off, pushing the rocket higher and higher. Then Stage 2 breaks away. Stage 3 fires. Up in space, the little moon pops out. Stage 3 lags behind, goes around the Earth a few times, then falls. But the moon keeps on going. A radio inside the little moon sends out signals telling what space is like. Gravity pulls on the little moon, but the moon works against this pull as it speeds ahead. Instead of falling into the earth, it falls around the earth. Around and around it goes, and it will keep on moving this way for many years. One of the first moons to go up had a dog inside. 
The dog's name was Laika. She lived in the sky for nearly a week, going around and around the Earth. Now that we know an animal can live in space, we are quite sure a man can live there too, but no man has tried to go into space because there is still no way to get back to the Earth safely. While some scientists are trying to find out how to land rockets safely, others are learning what kinds of spacesuits travelers will need. They pump air out of a room so it is like space. Men who are inside wear spacesuits to test them. The men breathe through a hose connected to an oxygen tank. How will the suits work in space? A man who wore one flew in a big balloon to the edge of space. He stayed there overnight. When he landed the next day, he said the suit was fine. Next, a man may test a spacesuit in a three-stage rocket. Perhaps he will pilot stage three after it breaks away and speeds into space. He will go too fast to feel the pull of gravity. His body will lose all its weight. He will float around the cabin if he isn't strapped in place. Will the first space traveler like the ride? When he lands, what will he tell us? Other men will follow the first space traveler into space. They will test bigger and bigger rockets. And so scientists will learn how to build great big rocket ships. These ships will fly around the world in an hour. In time, Scientists will know how to build rocket ships that can carry people to the moon. After the moon, what next? Perhaps people will visit other worlds in the sky. Perhaps, when you are grown up, rockets will be as common as airplanes are now. Then you and all your friends will be space travelers. Rockets away! The Little Golden Books are prepared under the supervision of Mary Reed, Ph.D., formerly of Teachers College, Columbia University. Copyright 1958 by Simon & Schuster Incorporated and Artists and Writers Press Incorporated. All rights reserved through the world. Designed and produced by the Sandpiper Press and Artists and Writers Press Incorporated. Printed in the USA by Western Printing and Lithographing Company. Published by Simon & Schuster Incorporated. Rockefeller Center, New York 20, New York. Published simultaneously in Canada by the Moosin Book Company Limited, Toronto.